Lesson 3. Changes for Israel. You are there. The year is 928 BC. Imagine you are living in the world described by the Hebrew Bible. The Israelites have gathered in the town of Shechem. King Solomon has just died. His son, Rehoboam, is about to become king. Soon, Israelites fear that Rehoboam will be like his father. They don't want to pay high taxes and be drafted to work. The crowd in Shechem is restless. Finally, someone shouts to Rehoboam, Your father made our yoke heavy. Now lighten the harsh labor and the heavy yoke which your father laid on us and we will serve you. How will Rehoboam answer? Will the Israelites be happy with his reply? Israel and Judah The northern Israelite tribes in the kingdom of Israel disliked Solomon. They believed that he had given special treatment to his own tribe Judah. They wondered why the members of the tribe of Judah did not have to pay taxes or work on building projects. When Solomon died and Rehoboam became king, the northern tribes wanted him to end taxes and drafted labor. After thinking about their request, Rehoboam told the tribes that he would not agree to their demands. In fact, he promised them harsher treatment than before. Hearing this, the northern tribes rebelled, causing the kingdom of Israel to split into two parts in 1928 BC. The northern tribes formed their own kingdom, keeping the name Israel. The city of Samaria became Israel's capital. Only the southern tribes of Judah and Benjamin remained loyal to Rehoboam. Their kingdom, whose capital was Jerusalem, became known as Judah. The word Jew comes from the name Judah. For the next 200 years, the two kingdoms remained politically divided and sometimes even fought against each other. Yet, they remained united by the same basic religious beliefs. However, Jerusalem and the Temple remained holy places to the Kingdom of Judah, and Israel built its own holy places in Samaria. In other ways, the two kingdoms were very different. Judah was small but strong, and its kings came from only one family, the House of David. This helped keep Judah's government stable. Israel had more people than Judah, and it faced more problems. The ten tribes of Israel often fought over who would lead the kingdom. Also, many Israelites were poor. According to the Bible, faced with hard lives, some Israelites began to turn away from God. Israel Falls to the Assyrians Not far from Israel lay the growing Assyrian Empire. The Assyrians were fierce warriors from northern Mesopotamia who expanded their empire by conquering other peoples. By 730 BC, they had reached Israel's borders. In 722 BC, Assyria conquered the weak and disorganized kingdom of Israel. The Assyrian king, Sargon II, boasted about his capture of Israel's capital, Samaria. He claimed, I led away 27,290 of its inhabitants as captives. I have rebuilt the city better than it had been before and settled it with people which I brought from the lands of my conquests. The Assyrians had a two-step plan for controlling territories they conquered. First, they forced many of the conquered people to leave their land. Second, they brought Assyrians into the conquered area. In this way, they tried to remove any connections that the conquered people had to their land. The Assyrians followed this plan when they conquered Israel. Many Israelites had to leave their land, especially Israelite leaders and wealthy Israelites. In this way, the Assyrians made sure that the remaining Israelites 
did not have the resources or the leadership to rebel. Large numbers of Assyrians settled in Samaria and the surrounding areas. There, they mixed with the Israelites who were allowed to stay. The new population became known as Samaritans. The Israelites who were forced to move lost contact with those who remained in Israel and Judah. Many of these 10 lost tribes of Israel continued to practice Judaism in their new lands. The Assyrians did not stop with the conquest of Israel. Next, they prepared to conquer Judah. Judah remains independent. Just as David had faced Goliath in the story told in the Bible, the people of Judah stood up to the mighty Assyrian army. They fought back as the Assyrians swept into their land. In 701 BC, Hezekiah, the king of Judah, protected Jerusalem from an Assyrian invasion. The Assyrian army had completely surrounded the walled city. The people could not leave their city without being captured or killed. They had no way to get the resources they needed. Hezekiah ordered a tunnel built so the water from a nearby spring could flow into Jerusalem. With a supply of water, the people of Judah outlasted their attackers. Judah remained independent for almost 100 years after the Assyrian attack. Then the Judeans once again faced danger. Summary In 928 BC, the Kingdom of Israel split into two parts, Israel and Judah. The two existed side by side for 200 years. In 722 BC, the Assyrian Empire conquered Israel. The Assyrians sent away many of the Israelites who became known as the Ten Lost Tribes of Israel. Judah fought off the Assyrians. Judaism survived and Jerusalem remained the center of Jewish religious life.